Wow. Can we get a, can we get a thank you for these two gentlemen, John Favreau and Dave Filoni? Can we please get a thank you for them for creating this masterpiece of the season they put in front of us? It boggles my mind that they were not the writers for the sequel trilogy. I would pay good, good money for Disney to retcon the sequel trilogy. And I personally enjoy the sequel trilogy. I don't love it. I enjoy it from time to time. But these two really should have written the sequel trilogy. Everybody will love it just as much as they love this show and this season. Hey guys, what's going on? I finished Mandalorian Season 2 and it fills me with immense joy and just happiness inside me as a big Star Wars fan to say it exceeded all of my expectations and I absolutely love this season. Way more than Season 1. Just to sum up Season 1 real quick, my thoughts about it. I thought Season 1 was good. When it hit, it really hit like a truck, but the filler episodes really hurt it really bad because they were just not very good. They were just mediocre at best. I give it an 8 out of 10 because like I said, when it hit, it hits like a truck. Season 2, no filler episodes at all. Every episode has a purpose to continue the plot and move it forward. Some may argue that there's one filler episode, but I don't see how it is because there's a whole reason for this journey to get to a certain spot, you know. I'm trying not to spoil anything. I will go into spoilers later, but I don't have much to say about the spoilers. So, we're just going to give you my thoughts on it. Without spoilers, then later, we will go into spoilers. This season improved upon everything in season one. I'm talking action, acting, the effects, the production looks outstanding. The, some of the music slaps as well. And... The new characters <laughs> oh man what a great season i cannot praise the season enough i was looking forward every friday at midnight because I, I stayed up to watch it every friday night gave me something to look forward to and every episode bang so let's start with the story the story is basically mando or din Djarin is on a quest to deliver baby yoda to a jedi he's trying to take him to a jedi searching across the galaxy for one and there's a lot of trouble along the way, a lot of journey and obstacles. And it's a pretty, pretty great story. I really enjoy it. It never derives from that story at all. It's all in function to get to the Jedi. And I really like that. Can I talk about the production on this show? Because it is unbelievable how good the effects and the production is on this show. I don't really notice it a lot of the times, but... This one, I really do notice it. it is literally on par with the movies. It really is. And it hits you like a truck on the first episode. You know, when you see that, not to spoil it that much, but when you see that Alaska bullworm looking motherfucker come out and you're like, holy cow, that is amazing. That's what I feel like on the show. It uses CGI very well, but it also uses practical effects, which I, uh, I, I'm a big fan of. You know, like Baby Yoda, the puppet, for example, but it uses a lot of practical effects that are just great to see and adds a sense of realism to the show. Also, the acting is surprisingly really deep. Pedro Pascal, he has some really great acting moments in the show, which you wouldn't expect to see because he's just like a Mandalorian bounty hunter, you know? But he really shines on here. He delivers some very emotional moments where he's very vulnerable and it is it's great there's a lot of detail in his performances and specific moments i'm sure you guys know which one but holy cow he really delivered and he's easily starting to become my favorite one of my favorite actors now because of it he really killed it this season my god it's clear the passion he has for the character and you just love to see it overall i think all the characters do a good job of what they're given they really shine and really put it all in their performances and I love to see it because every character was so interesting in this show. And even, sorry, sorry you hear my PS4 going in the background, I'm downloading something, but all the new characters are amazing and they really are exactly <laughs> like what you expect from other Star Wars mediums you've seen and as like I said, as a big Star Wars fan, I love to see it. My 
my favorite animated characters in live action. It's out, it's outstanding to see. The action is also a very big step up. There's not even just like shootouts. The shootouts are great as well, but there's a lot of like hand-to-hand -hand combat fights that are pretty damn good. There's also combat with certain weaponry involved, and it's pretty fucking awesome. The action was great. There's also some like, you know, how do I explain this? Like horror themed action. It's like Terminator 1 action and it and it works really well. You really feel the intensity like you're supposed to and it does a very good job of that because you care about a lot of these characters. So it really works out well. But yeah guys, I'm running out of words to say, you know, <laughs> good things without spoiling the Mandalorian season 2. So let's sum it up real quick. I love this season. It was a great improvement on season 1. I was glued to my screen the whole time. You know, just itching and clawing for the next episode every week. And it's what you should do if you're having weekly episodes. I really think you should be doing that. And it does a very good job with that. You know. Also, let's not forget about that little guy, Baby Yoda. <laughs> what a great little guy. They give him they give him a lot of scenes in this and they're really good. You know, I love how they're able to convey what he's thinking without him saying the word and they do a really good job you're always able to tell what he's thinking and he never talks at all they do such a good job with that little guy and god i just want to hug him he's so cute <laughs> but yeah overall i love this show everybody is loving it for a reason i'm a big star wars fan and i'm immensely just joyful because of the season and I'm happy to see that even non-Star Wars fans are enjoying the show. I've noticed a lot of people are watching it for an obvious reason. But still, they're actually really enjoying it. And it makes me super happy to see that they're actually getting into it because of this show. Overall, I love the season. It was way better than season one. It improved upon it pretty much in every single way. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a 9.5 out of 10. Whew, really spectacular season. And I'm not going to lie, guys, the final episode, which I think is the best, when, which, by the way, one last thing, every episode, like, once it got to one particular episode, I want to say, like, the fifth one, it kept getting in a position where it just kept one-upping every episode. So the next episode I will watch, I'm like, wow, this is great. Wow, this is great. Wow, holy shit. And then when I got to the last episode, I was just like, it just kept getting that good and the last episode really made me tear up but i was also very very happy with the way it ended and i haven't felt that way with star wars for a very long time but that's that's a really good thing that star wars made me feel that way this is the best star wars has been since the original trilogy this is like really really I'm going to say this. This is peak Star Wars. This is what the original trilogy was. This is how I'm sure it felt in the 80s and early in the late 70s. Because, wow. I was just blown away by the season. It was such a fun show. I'm glad it's in the hands of uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni and a bunch of writers and directors who love Star Wars, who give a shit about what they're making, who have so much passion for what they're putting on screen. I just love to see it. And I wish a lot more studios would do this because this this is the only one I can really think of along with the Marvel Netflix Daredevil show. You know, it was written by people who love Daredevil. You know, um, Ryan Reynolds' is Deadpool. It's so good because it's written by Reynolds himself who loves Deadpool. It's written by a bunch of Deadpool fans. And that's really what I think studios should be doing with a lot of these properties. Like if you're going to make a Batman movie, have someone who loves and cares and understands Batman be the one to make it. But yeah, guys, I'm running out of words to not spoil this. So let's get into the spoilers. Out. If you're here to this point and you haven't seen season two, what the hell are you doing? Go watch it. <laughs> you will not regret it. I promise you. But yeah, guys, let's get into the spoilers. Grogu. Ooh. Grogu. Ooh. That was the most adorable shit I've ever seen. I think Grogu is a really cute name for the child. 
Man, the main thing I wanted to discuss is basically the characters they introduce and the ending. Mainly like the, you know, the canon Star Wars characters they introduced from the other universe. So first off, there's Bo-Katan. I'm really happy they got the same actress who voiced her in Clone Wars and Rebels to play her in the show. And she nails it. She's everything I would expect. And it's... <laughs> she did such a good job. She's played her for so many years and it really makes me happy to see her bring her the uh, voice actress to bring her in live action. It was so cool to see she was badass and super hot by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. I love the Bo-Katan in the series. I loved her and oh my god We finally got a live action Ahsoka and it was tremendous. It was amazing. Rosario Dawson clearly knows Ahsoka Tano very well because she nailed it. She plays an Ahsoka that would actually experience all those things. You know, see her best friend slash Jedi Master turn to the dark side and she nailed it. She has, a lot of people said she was like kind of dead face, but this is an Ahsoka that's been through a lot, you know? Not a lot. It's going to take a lot to phase her now. But I thought Rosario Dawson did a wonderful job as Ahsoka. She clearly seems to be a big fan of her. God, it just filled me with so much joy to see Ahsoka in live action. And done so well. She was so awesome. Now, let's talk about Boba Fett. I'm going to be honest. I'm one of the people that have always found Boba Fett to be very overrated. I've always thought he's just a character that looks cool, but... He never really does anything. Like in the original trilogy, he just gets his ass spanked by a blind Han Solo. <laughs> but this show, when he was introduced, made me throw all that out the window because he is pretty badass. And they made him pretty interesting as well. He's not just some random bounty hunter. He's trying to find his purpose in the galaxy. As he says, I'm a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. But yeah, he was badass. My only problem with him is that after that episode where they put him in the action and give him the suit back, they never really do anything with him. They literally just have him be a distraction. You know, in that episode, the second to last, where they're trying to get into the, you know, the Imperial facility, he's just a distraction. And the biggest thing he does is drop a, a bomb on another TIE fighter, which was cool. And the last episode, He's just another distraction, distracting from other TIE Fighters. I thought that was just kind of a waste of Boba Fett. Especially the Boba Fett fans who wanted to see him in action. But, I know. I know he's getting a show, and I'm sure we'll see plenty of action with him, but... Still, I, I would have loved to see a little bit more Boba Fett. You know? But, whatever. What they gave us was great. Alright, now let's talk about what happened in the final episode. Luke fucking Skywalker shows up! Holy shit! And it's Mark Hamill! I don't even care that his face looks like ass. <laughs> I was just happy to see Mark Hamill. To me, Mark Hamill will always be Luke Skywalker. This is the Luke Skywalker we've always wanted to see. Not the fucking depressed old man hiding in his cave this and holy cow it was awesome when i saw that x-wing get into the imperial ship i was ready to lose my shit and oh my god i did you know he's going up against all those i i don't remember their name i don't remember what they're called but those terminator asteroids that are tanks you know they were punching the room mando kara bogatan were in and it looked like it was doomed for them, but nope. Here comes Luke Skywalker to save the day, and he tears through all of them. They fucking recreated the Vader Rogue One scene with Luke. And it was awesome. It was so badass. I was fucking going crazy for it. Holy shit. I've never been more surprised and amazed by a TV show in a long time. My like six, seven year old self was amazing. To finally see a post Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. We've always heard that he became incredibly powerful after Return of the Jedi, but we've never seen it, and now we have, and oh boy, do I believe it.
But after all that excitement, Dave Filoni and John Favreau decided to take out my heart and fucking gut punch me with emotion because the scene where Mando has to say goodbye to Grogu was it really hit me there it really it was really emotional I really teared up during that moment it was so sad to see it was like a parent watching his kid leave for college you know see him and all grown up that's what it was like and Oh man, when Din took off his helmet for Grogu to see him without his helmet one last time, it was, fuck me, I lost it, dude, I really lost it. That was the most sad I've gotten over Star Wars in a very, very long time. And wow, I was an emotional wreck. Holy cow, that was such a sad moment. I Like, like I said earlier, I've never been so happy and sad at the same time. You know, seeing Luke arrive, a Mark Hamill Luke, and then seeing Grogu go by. It was super, super sad. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the spoilers. I just wanted to cover those things because those were like the highlights of the season for me. There was a lot of them, but those were mm, kick-ass to me. I love this season. Holy fucking shit, it was such a good season. Like I said before, couldn't wait. Every week, Thursday, midnight, Friday, midnight, I mean, whatever. Couldn't wait. Fuck me. I really am going to miss this show, miss waiting for an episode every week. I cannot wait for Mando Season 3, the Boba Fett show, and all the other Star Wars shows they got coming on. This should be the new canon, in my opinion. They should just fucking throw the sequel trilogy away and just make these canon. Just make these shows canon. I think that'd be the very good choice, but... Disney's probably not going to do it, but whatever. I'm very pleased with where Star Wars is heading right now. In movie, well not movies, because they're not doing shit with those, but <laughs> TV shows, gaming wise, you know we got Fallen Order 2 on the way, Lego Star Wars is approaching soon. It is a very good time to be a Star Wars fan. That's all I can say for now. Yeah, amazing time to be a Star Wars fan. Probably... As close as we're going to get to the original trilogy, how it was to feel back then, you know, for a younger generation like me. Because I'm only 20 years old, you know. I was born in 2000. I never got to experience that peak Star Wars hype. I didn't get to experience, like, the Phantom Menace hype. But, yeah, anyways, that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more content like this I've created, i also done other movie and game reviews before. And also, like, ranking, like, movies and stuff like that. So... I encourage you to check it out, but in case you're this is your first time here, I do Let's Plays. Right now, I'm doing a Let's Play on God of War 2018, which is a phenomenal game, by the way. And by the time you're seeing this, I will have started Resident Evil 3. And I'm playing Dark Souls 3 with my good friend Israel. We should check out, by the way, his name, his YouTube name is Deadly Dax. I'll leave his channel in the description. If you're in the Black Ops Zombies and anime, you will like his channel. So give him a watch. But yeah, guys, this has been fun. I will see you guys later.